Welcome to another show, I'm Sid and in today's video I want to go over some examples of how you can incorporate 2D text into your filters on Instagram and Facebook. I have a lot of tutorials on my channel, uh, they're organized into playlists so you can check them out, there's over 50 of them available right now and I'm planning to upload several more in the future. So be sure to hit subscribe and stay notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and don't forget to comment below uh, what you want to see next and if you what you thought of the video just generally. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is show off uh, how to in how to actually implement 2D text, how to what, demonstrate that. So I'll open up a new project for that and then we'll come back over here and I'll go through some examples that I've already set up in this scene here. So first up, we'll open up a new project and I'll switch over to the FaceTime camera. Hello, I'm back again. Uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to show you how to do a face tracker because that's not in this other example that I have set up. So I'll show you how to do that first of all and then uh, incorporate that into the rest of it. So you'll know how to do that, you won't have to ask in the comments. So we've got a face tracker and now we want to add a canvas and inside of that canvas we're going to add a 2D text asset. So we have that now all nested together. You can see that the text is not actually tracking onto my face the way you would expect and that's because here in the canvas settings under in the in the properties menu under visibility and mode you want to uh, change the camera space option you want to change that to world space so now as you can see it's tracking onto my head it's currently at position zero zero which is the center of my face but if i hit pause then i can adjust it and uh place the text wherever i want so now if i unpause it's tracking onto my head and um, with that text you can do any of the other stuff that i will demonstrate in this other example so as just, just to quickly clarify, uh, with mode you can alternate between world space, which is for things like face tracking, where you want it to move in relation to you, and camera space, where the text moves in relation to the camera. So it stays in place and I move around. And it's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So that's the example of this. Sorry, this video is going to be a little bit strange because I've already set up the scene and I'm not walking you through it step by step. But I still thought it was a fun video to make. Anyway, so that's how you set everything up. That's how you move between camera and world space with face tracking. I'll discard this now and we'll come back over here to what I've previously uh, arranged for you. So obviously the first thing I have set up here is just a background color. It's translucent so you can see me. That's more for aesthetic purposes than anything. Uh, you don't need that at all as I've demonstrated already. What I have here as some examples are the things that you can actually do with the 2D text. So if you have your 2d text already set up and that assets already enabled and you have it set up in your in your actual scene you can come down here and you can write whatever you want in there so for example this one is time long which is this one up here uh, as you can see it's already doing some cool animation stuff there's a different color it's got a lot going on with this one uh, there's a little javascript a little piece of javascript code here uh, and if you hit insert dynamic text then you actually get this full drop down menu with a bunch of uh, pre-selected options that you can choose from. So we have here current city, current airport. So those are based on GPS and location, temperature value and unit, again, GPS and location, and then all of these for time and date. So you have various uh, versions of the time and date. As you can see here, we have the actual full time, which is uh, hours, minutes, and seconds, but you can have the shorter versions of that. So you can have the medium version, which takes the seconds off, and the short version, which I suppose is just the 24 hour clock once an hour. Uh, but yeah, so, there's the same with the, the days of the week. You can have Saturday and then also all of these. And they are, because they're based on JavaScript, they automatically update. So if you add Saturday, so you won't have to manually type Saturday in and have it just be a Saturday filter. You can put the, uh, the date, short, medium, or long, or full, and then just it will automatically update on its own. Based on that, from that, sorry, you can uh, adjust the text and things. So you can move it from the center to the middle or like... Like the, the, the way you would typically be able to adjust text in a Word document. You can adjust the spacing, the line spacing, the letter spacing. Uh, you also have these options down here for position, scale, and rotation. As you can see, I'm already enabled scale in the patch editor. So you can take these uh, text, uh, 2D text uh, what are they, assets, and you can adjust them and incorporate them with other patches down here. So you can manipulate them in more detailed ways than you might expect. We also have materials. This one already has a material enabled. So you can change the color of the text manually. So you can just have it be whatever you want. Uh, I probably would work better if I did it with this one, which is, has the example already. I've made this one red. So you can make any text any color already. But 
uh, if you add a material to it, so I've added a material to this one, time long, and that exists down here now. So you can not only adjust the color, but you can also add it as a texture in here. So you can do other things with it. For example, if I wanted to uh, like use the RGB color shift or duotone or something to have like different colored uh, text, different colored letters and things like that, I could probably work around with something like that in the patch editor. So like I say, there's all different types of stuff you can do. Uh, they incorporate JavaScript, so uh, they're automatically updating. As you can see, this one's updating by the second and you can implement them and you can add uh, components and implement them into the patch editor. For example, this loop animation that I've made with the time, which is set to a duration of 7.5 seconds uh, mirrored, so it's the total duration of one full 15 second story. So that's just a looping animation connected to a transition, which is a uh, vector 2, because we're connecting to our 2D scale, which has an X and a Y value, so two different vectors. So it would be a number if, for example, you, you were using a uh, like uh, the RGB color shift where you want it a value between 0 and 1 or 0 and 100. But with this example, it uses X and Y, not the Z coordinate. So we only need a vector 2 setting. You can adjust that just by clicking down here at the bottom. Uh, we don't need this right now, so I'll delete it. We'll go through the rest. So I have the time with the long, all the time and long. I have the date of the week. I have the, the full date, which here is the, the date with the actual numerical values. So you can incorporate all these in different ways. You've, I've already shown you how you can add face tracking, but if you're creating a more aesthetic filter, some people would like to have sometimes maybe the date in the bottom left corner or in the top corner or somewhere, just to keep it more, you know, just to personalize that filter, that style of filter. Maybe you're creating something with a specific type of patch and you just want to add uh, a day in the corner or, or the, the, the temperature outside for some, like, some photos that might work well this one in particular is kind of strange to me it's the actual altitude so this is the, the altitude value and this is the number if i come down here the dynamic text you see the altitude value and the altitude unit so for this one i have and the same with the temperature what i've done is i've just added both this is the first piece of javascript and then this is the second one and they kind of fit together so you can insert the uh, altitude value and then the unit and the temperature value and then the unit just as one thing inside of your altitude or temperature i don't need one each for both you know what i mean otherwise you're just moving them separately uh which is I sh which is the next thing i really want to talk about which is over here this is quite a new feature uh i think i don't know if it was here when i was last using spark ar but i don't remember it which is you can now alternate between the 3d world edit which is this kind of setup and a 2d world edit so you can adjust things in a more just zooming in and out type of way more like photoshop so if i reduce the size of this a little bit you see that i can now use this and if I pull this down slightly it makes the screen a little bit bigger I can now click on individual things and just drag them around and adjust them in 2d space as opposed to having to worry about where they are in relation to everything else going on which is nice it's a really cool feature I like that they've updated it it reminds me of the blender feature where you can draw in 2d like uh, and other similar things with Photoshop and GIMP and stuff like it's kind of incorporating all of those elements I think to try and make it easier for people generally who are creating uh, not just with text, but with any type of filler. So yeah, maybe for animation, this would work very well as well, like keyframe animation and things, but this is unrelated to what I'm talking about right now. But yeah, anyway, you could come into the 2D uh, environment and you can click and drag and it automatically, oh, not like that. You can click and drag and it will automatically move things around and snap them into place uh, according to distance from the edges and the corners and from in relation to other things in the environment around that, that you've already set up so that's a pretty nice feature as well i really like that uh like i said this is quite a simple video like there's not too much to talk about but all of these are things that i've kind of rediscovered or kind of got back into and either noticed new features in or realized I hadn't been thinking about as much as I probably should have. So I just wanted to go over them, cover all these different things. There are probably a, a million ways that you could take these and develop them further. Like I think there's probably, because you can add materials and, and, and things like that and, and, and like add this texture, for example, into here, I, I imagine there are ways you could incorporate JavaScript a little bit as well. I'm not sure what exactly you might be able to do, but yeah, I'm sure you could you could do that to maybe change the color to have it be like a rainbow color, so it automatically changes between colors, or or a ro rotating like I, I'm like I don't know like a Rolodex type situation where you could just have like a almost like a calendar setup, so where you can swipe through different days of stuff. I don't know. There's there's probably a lot of different things you can do, and the more advanced you are 
in different fields, the more creative you'll be able to be at certain things. But yeah, this is just covering those simple, uh, basic, fundamental techniques, I suppose, that, that, that everybody should probably know, but I didn't until recently, basically a few hours ago, and I just wanted to share in a video. This is very long, very rambly. There's probably a lot of traffic outside because the window's open and it's quite hot, and I'm wearing this hoodie because I'm an idiot. But yeah, uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit like, uh, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'm trying to put out a video every weekday, a tutorial video every single weekday. Uh, so I'm back in things. I'm back in the swing of things. I'm still learning as I go, especially with making videos like this. So I apologize for the rambling. And I appreciate everyone who subscribed so far and liked and commented and all the engagement that you've given me. It means so much and I appreciate it. With that being said, I'm going to sign off now and say peace.